From the studio that keeps inventing new ways for games to be bad comes their biggest belly flop in recent memory. And that's saying something. Like, weren't we literally just talking about Avatar, and now we've got to talk about another boring blue open world? <sighs> Must be Tuesday. Skull and Bones. Gather your crew and get ready for the world's first quadruple A clunker. As you dive into. Wait, there's no diving? Okay, as you swashbuckle through. Hold on, there's no swashbuckling either? Jeez, what kind of pirate game is this? as you mindlessly sail through the vast empty oceans of Skull and Bones. Another mediocre sacrifice at the altar of live service. Okay, when are game companies gonna learn that I didn't get into gaming to hang out with <sighs> other people? Marvel at Ubisoft's second go-around with Assassin's Creed Black Flag, minus all the stuff that made it fun. As our most reliable game devs finally release Skull and Bones, one of the biggest disappointments of the year. What a week, huh? Lemon, it's March. Not that anyone was surprised it was bad, as the tumultuous waters of multiple delays, production problems, and not even knowing if this game would even come out, delivers it completely dead in the water. Hoist the mizzen and get ready to explore the high seas, which apparently have more Jack Sparrows floating around than Comic Con. With so many pirates trolling for treasure, it's amazing anyone still lives in these ramshackle seaside towns. Although, since you're not allowed to leave your ship, there's no way to know just how many people are hanging out in there. Well, fewer now, I guess. Scallywag your way into the crashing waves as your ship gets sunk, and you have to pull yourself up by the sandal straps to make a name for yourself in the pirate world where you'll choose between a bunch of generic avatars like microwave whirring sound, skin too good for this climate, and Korean Jesus. Hey, hey! Stop f***ing with Korean Jesus! He ain't got time for your problems! Then find yourself in the thralls of the Pirate King, who will make you do a bunch of fetch quests as you go from your boat to this guy, to your boat again, to this guy again, to the boat again again, and that's kind of it. In a narrative that is less about being a pirate, and more about being an Instacart driver to a scurvy-riddled Karen. Uh, I said I wanted the French booty, not this generic flotsam. No tip! Become one with your ship in Skull and Bones open ocean, literally, as you roam around for minerals and resources from the comfort of your own boat where most of the exploration feels like you're just rocking up to different drive through windows. A number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. And when you are off the boat, you just run around buying stuff or digging up one treasure chest, making it almost completely pointless, as Ubisoft makes the powerful decision to not let you have any sort of combat outside of your boat, resulting in a game that's straight up not really about pirates at all. Oh, come on, you can't even board the ships? My pirate lore might be a bit rusty, but I'm pretty sure that was sort of a big part of their whole deal back then. The pirates right at Disneyland has more engaging pirate things to do than this. Because at least there, they do expect you to get off the boat eventually. And boy, do they get mad if you don't. Mr. Mouse, I am so sorry I refused to get off the pirate ride. I it was just so fun, and I wanted to go around again, but pl please, let me back in your good, good park. And also, I'm sorry I pillaged the gift shop. Fire your cannonballs in pitched naval battles, where you'll outfit your ship with different types of weapons and perks, so you can have any chance of taking down the other ships that are just one level higher than you. Then scrape together enough scrap to get your hands on a slightly better boat, all so you can finally plunder the island just a little more effectively than before, where you'll become a menace to the high seas, taking down any small fishing boat you see just to curb your boredom until you end up getting every other ship in a 100-foot radius to kick the shit out of you and your tricked-out tub. As you start to wonder how you can take down some of these bigger ships and fortresses before realizing that this game has a multiplayer component, as you call for help to have no one answer you. Maybe it wasn't the greatest idea to make a live service game based on the Ubisoft online community. I mean, people can barely stand each other in Rainbow Six. What made them think it would work in a game about people notorious for cutting each other's throats? Not that anyone was playing to begin with. 
So put on your finest tricorn and get ready to plunder that booty. For one of the most mediocre showings Ubisoft's dropped to date, in a relic of the old era where trailers promised the world and delivered total bullshit. Although it was like seven years ago, so maybe they just forgot, you know, the rest of the game. Starring Just Play Sea of Thieves, Pirates of the Don't Caribbean. There's actually one really good part of this game, and honestly, it's so good, we'd almost recommend playing just so you can see it for yourself. But we never do that to you. So instead, get a load of this guy, and this guy, oh, and these guys. Comment below on what you want to hear in my epic voice and check out these other epic gaming videos on GameSpot. For democracy, for liberty, for super earth. The Ministry of Truth is currently reviewing this video for treason. Gratuitous violence is underrated. If I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. It's afraid.